So assalamu alaikum, peace and blessings be upon you. My name is Delaz Raj, like Scott had mentioned, and I'm a huge supporter of Catholic Theological Union and the beauty this institution brings to our community. I would like to begin to pay respect to the local indigenous people of the Potawatomi tribe, the traditional custodians of this land and where we are meeting upon today. We are here today at CTU as we discuss the significance of diversity based on interfaith chaplaincy in the military and celebrate the historic oath ceremony for Salah Jabin as the first female Muslim chaplain candidate for United States Air Force and the Department of Defense. I've had the honor of knowing Saleha for the past few years as a community organizer in my role at the Muslim Community Center. Her passion, meticulous attention for details, and her drive to create more equity in this world is clearly obvious. Many times Saleha and I have worked on interreligious events and have had the ability to bring in her strong faith drive and also her ability to be an ally for the Muslim and well as the Catholic, the Jewish, and other faith traditions. Saleha knows far too well that if you hate one group of people, you usually hate other groups of people. As immigrants, Saleha and I have also known that America is our country with all the good, bad, and ugly, but that justice means we need to work harder together. In the Quran, it is stated, God will continuously test your faith through calamity, loss of life, or loss of wealth. In another verse of the Quran, it states, with hardship comes ease. With hardship comes ease. So now as I stand here amongst my friends and community leaders, I am so proud of Saliha. I'm not just proud of Saliha alone, I'm proud of America. I'm proud of how we each can make a difference in America. So thank you, Saliha, for choosing the Air Force and the Department of Defense and to be a Muslim chaplain. This is no small endeavor. And I'm so honored here, and we're all so honored here to support you. Salam alaikum. It's my great pleasure to be here this, this morning. Uh, I am the grandson of immigrants. I think most of us in this room can say the same thing. I think it is most important, especially during these days, that we concentrate on what we have in common. And the first thing we all have in common is the fact that we're children of the same God, a God of compassion, a God of mercy, a God who loves each one of us. And when the possibility of having this oath ceremony uh, was proposed to me that it be at CTU, I jumped at the chance because CTU since the year 2000 has had an outreach to the, the Muslim community to offer a place of dialogue and a safe place for Muslims, Christians, and Jews to come together to dialogue. And so this particular ceremony that we're celebrating today is in a certain sense a culmination, the fruit of the kind of work that we have been doing since the year 2000, since the, actually since the beginning of the school. And so on, on behalf of all of the people at CTU, students, faculty, staff, I wish you welcome. Thank you for being here and salam. My original roomie was a chaplain, Abdul Rashid Muhammad, <laughs> where we roomed at Fort Hood yeah. and I think Fort Bragg when I was Secretary General of ISNA back in 2010 through 2013. Um, Prior to that, I've, I've, I've heard about chaplaincy. I vaguely understood what a chaplain is, but not until I became the Secretary General of ISNA that I had to uh, be educated by Chaplain Abdul Rashid Muhammad about what does it mean uh, for ISNA to be a, a, an endorsing agency and for him to be the endorsing agent. And he took me actually around, around the country to different uh, bases, different events, introduced me. And I truly, truly came to understand and appreciate the importance of, of, of chaplaincy uh, and, and, and the importance of the role that ISNA plays uh, in that regard. 
uh, we are very proud as, a, as an institution that is going on its 56th year of existence uh, to be the first endorsing agency in the country for Muslims, to have uh, Chaplain Abdul Rashid Muhammad as our very first uh, chaplain, as was mentioned by Scott, endorsed uh, in December of 1993 uh, until his retirement from, from the military uh, uh, as a uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel, actually, and we were together uh, around that time as well. Um, and uh, we are proud of the fact that we believe that, that Muslim chaplains in the military uh, serve an extremely vital role. Uh, they do tend to Muslims that serve proudly in the military, uh, and, and there are uh, several thousands of them. A lot of people in our country are not aware of the service and the dedication that many Muslims have uh, uh, serving their country in the, in, in the military, but also uh, as providing comfort and support to all military personnel, wherever they may be stationed, uh, but also serving as role models. Uh, I, I've seen and I've witnessed instances and, uh, and places where the presence of a Muslim chaplain played a role in, in creating bridges, in, in, in perhaps even erasing some stereotypes and some, and some misconceptions. And so we're proud to be the first endorsing agency to be the endorsers of the very first Muslim chaplain in the army. And today we are 100 million times more proud to be the first also to endorse, to, to endorse the very first female Muslim chaplain in the Air Force. Thank you. And I have to say, and I, uh, sir, uh, I would like to, to, to address you and tell you I'm extremely proud uh, at how the Air Force in the last few years uh, really kind of, you know, when the army decided to have their first Muslim chaplain, I know there was a talk about what are they doing and the other branches of, of the military, you know, looking at this and saying, is this going to be okay? Is this going to work out? Uh, but then, you know, after that, the Navy had their chaplain, then the Air Force. And since then, I really love how the Air Force em em embraced this idea of bringing on Muslim chaplains and more of them. And today to champion bringing on the very first Muslim female uh, chaplain is something that is commendable. I, I truly am, am honored to, to be here addressing you and to be part of this historic, historic time. Um, and so we come to Saliha, as was said before, and Dilnaz know her a lot more, uh, but I've come to know her recently. And, and honestly, the, I can tell you the one thing that strikes me about her, this is a person that I believe was created to be a giver. That's how I can describe her, honestly. Uh, from the very few conversations that we had together, from, from the things that I've learned about her, and there is not a better place for her to be than to be a chaplain, providing that comfort, that support to people normally th who require and need that support and comfort more than the average person, perhaps more than anybody else. Uh, so we are very proud, and we know we know for a fact that she will do us proud. And so today, I, I am I'm very honored. Uh, to uh, uh, announce that, that Isna uh, proudly will be endorsing uh, Saliha to be the very first female uh, chaplain candidate in the United States Air Force, and uh, uh, Abdul Rashid, Imam Abdul Rashid Mohammed will uh, do the uh, honor of, of, of the logistics of that. Uh, I, before I step down, I want to thank uh, the, the Catholic Theological Union and uh, Father Francis, and I want to recognize also Father Senior, who I've known for such a long time. Again, uh, such a godly man. That's how I can describe you. Uh, from the day I met you and the very first conversation I had with you, uh, I, 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 I felt that I'm in the presence of, of a man of God, and, and I'm honored to, to have known you and honored to, to be associated with and having uh, really visited uh, the Catholic Theological Union many, many times, thanks to my roomie. Uh, and, and, and I'm honored to be here today, very grateful. And it's such a great, happy occasion uh, uh, that I uh, am very grateful to be a small part of. Thank you so much all for coming, and God bless you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Abdul Rashid Mohammed, and I serve as the endorsing agent for the Islamic Society of North America. Um, I'm also a mental health chaplain with the Department of Veteran Affairs 
uh, at the um, VA hospital in San Diego, California. Um, I begin this talk with God's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Praise be to almighty God, Allah. We thank him, we praise him, and we seek forgiveness, and we honor him, and we ask that his prayer, that the prayers and peace be upon his servant and messenger, Prophet Muhammad. This is um, a great occasion, obviously, and I wanted to first begin by recognizing the parents of Sister Saliha, Brother Muhammad Yusuf and Sister uh, Salma Asar. I wanted to also recognize our Vice President Safa Zarzur and also give a special thanks and welcome to Chaplain Major General Stephen Shank, from the United States Air Force. We welcome all of you friends and guests who have come from different locations for this occasion. And as we celebrate this uh, historic occasion, the commissioning ceremony of Sister Saliha Jabin as a chaplain candidate, uh, we remember that nothing happened without God's permission. So firstly, we thank God for all the good that he brings into our life. And we give him the praise and glory forever. Amen. We thank him for the life example of the prophets from Adam to Muhammad. May God be pleased with all of them. This is the beginning of a journey. Inshallah, God willing, this journey, like many journeys, will be crafted with hills and valleys. As a chaplain myself for nearly 30 years, I can give open testimony that being a chaplain is actually the work of the prophets because we don't just represent our faith groups, but we represent humanity. And as a representative of humanity, a chaplain has to be prepared to deal with sometimes the most difficult and challenging human circumstances. And we have to be able and willing to make many sacrifices Sometimes, even in what we perceive to be our theological calling, for the sake of enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. As Sister Saliha begins this journey, our prayer for her is that Allah will bless and protect her and help her to meet these challenges. Because in actuality, she will be faced with ministering to more people that is outside of her faith than those that will be inside of her faith. And she will be called against many odds to do things that right now she <laughs> doesn't even know. But we know as an endorsing body that she has the right stuff. The Air Force recognized that, and we knew it even before, which is why we sent her forward on this task. She proved it when she was a layperson as an Army E-4. She made every one of our chaplain training and was always enthusiastic and well-spoken. So we know that she has what is necessary to work in the most diverse and pluralistic environments that this country has to offer. And we want her to know that as an endorsing body and as representatives of the Islamic community of America, that we will always be with her. And we will be prepared 
for all contingencies if it pleases Almighty God. So we thank you, Chaplain Shank, United States Air Force. We thank all of those who work behind the scenes to make this happen, the Islamic Society of North America, and all the many people who are still learning about what chaplaincy is all about. We thank all of you. And we thank the Catholic Theological Union for having the moral courage to have an, inter an interfaith program that actually, to my knowledge, is second to none. We just have to find ways to get the word out there so that what you are doing here will reach the far corners of America because we need more Catholic theological unions in this country to bring hearts and minds together from different faiths so that morality will have its rightful place in our country. We thank you. May God continue to bless you. Assalamu alaikum. We are about to, uh, to commission our, our newest lieutenant here, and uh, Lieutenant Jameen is soon to be uh, officially welcomed into the commissioned officer ranks of our United States Air Force. We're excited about that. And, um, and I just want you to know that, uh, that we in the United States military, unlike uh, many other militaries around the world, we do not uh, uh, assign allegiance uh, to a ruler, um, to a dictator, to, uh, to, to a king, to an emperor, or even a president. We, we uh, promise allegiance to an idea, and quite frankly, an ideal, an experiment that began more than 230 years ago, that experiment we know of as the U.S. Constitution. And even though the president is, of course, our, uh, our commander in chief, and, uh, and, and we, uh, we, we follow uh, under the guidance of elected officials. That's what the military does. We don't make uh, decisions as to the macro movements of, uh, of militaries. But first and foremost, our promise is to the U.S. Constitution and this, this amazing document that we still, and even as you know what's going on in Washington today, are still trying to to, to, uh, to parse and, and fully understand, but a document that I believe um, is at least small eye inspired and, and one that uh, quite frankly makes America unique and, and makes me very, very proud to be a part of, uh, of, of its military. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most benevolent and compassionate. Shalom Alaikum. Peace be with you all. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, everyone, for um, just being present here, making this day and this time a priority in your calendar to come here and bless me on this journey as I start. It's a little emotional. This historic achievement belongs to each of you. Your love and support makes this moment an unforgettable one for my family and myself. I also acknowledge the spirit of all who could not join in person today because either they're serving somewhere or they're taking care of somebody who really needs them. I know they're sending blessings my way and I know they've always been supporting me. So I appreciate that and welcome that in spirit. Before we proceed further, I invite you, you guys can hear me, right? I invite you, before we proceed, I invite you, either you can stand up or however your faith or your background allows you, let's take a moment of silence and remember all those who have passed away to the eternal realm. Let us give and send a gift of loving remembrance to our dear ones, all the peacemakers, known and unknown, our troops and our ancestors, and all the departed souls, their families everywhere who suffered and battled the evils of bigotry and injustice. 
let us lift all our sisters and brothers in love and light. If you know Al-Fatiha, I want you to just recite it. May God accept our prayers of speech and in deed. Amen, amen, amen. My family and I are ever grateful to all the individuals involved in very rigorous planning and diligent execution of this event. Thank you, Rabbi Mikwa, Alia Bilal, and Mary Ellen Knud for leading us today and displaying the power of collective prayer. Special mention to Dr. Scott Alexander, and CTU leadership for the enthusiasm and generosity with which I was welcomed to share this historic moment with my family, my mentors, my friends, my members of Muslim community, and the Chicagoland interfaith community that have gathered here. I am extremely grateful for the pioneering leadership at ISNA for leading the way and endorsing the first woman, Muslim woman, to serve as a future chaplain a religious leader at the U.S. Department of Defense. My family and I thank the ISNA leadership for co-sponsoring this event with CTU, and I feel blessed by your compassionate leadership, Brother Safa Zarzur, and for your invaluable mentorship, Chaplain Muhammad. I thank Chaplain Shoida Hussein, retired Lieutenant Colonel Army, she's not present here. She paved the path for women like myself and for encouraging all of us to dream big. Congratulations to you all for making this celebration and this day possible. My family and I are honored and grateful to have Chaplain Major General Stephen Sheikh amongst us. There could be no better way to commence my journey with the Air Force as a chaplain candidate, sir. I am strengthened by your, fam by your presence and humbled by your genero generosity, sir. And today, after meeting you in person, I really hope I can live up to your legacy in this great tradition of Air Force. On behalf of my family, CTU, and ISNA, I thank Chaplain Sheikh. Chaplain Major Wilson, and Chaplain Commander Saiful Islam for the generous support in helping us plan a successful event. Chaplain Saif could not come because he's a chaplain and he's taking care of people. <laughs> he just told me last night. <laughs> My journey with the armed forces began with the Army Reserve. I am grateful for the leaders at 801st Combat Support Hospital, the leaders including Brigade Commander Colonel Stephen Donnan, Commanding Officer Alpha Company Major Jordan Wolf, and Unit Minister Leader Chaplain Darren Kirkman for encouraging me, for encouraging me to, to freely practice my religion, Islam, and to teach about it. The soldiers at the 801st Combat Support Hospital at Fort Sheridan would always have a special place in my heart. <coughs> I thank all the soldiers, many are present today, who warmly welcome me as a Muslim lay leader. Thank you for your consistent support. Thank you for participating in the study sessions about Islam and for taking deep interest in learning about the cultural sensitivities to be better equipped for your service commitments. I would not be standing here without your support. Thank you. <laughs> I don't think I can say that. <laughs> Everyone has accompanied me during the past 14 years since I first came to America as an international student. People know how challenging this journey has been. Nevertheless, I'm extremely grateful for it. In your presence and accompaniment, I have witnessed one of God's attributes that has been key to my success today. God's attribute is al-Latif. It is understood as the combined attribute of kindness, 
beauty and gentleness. All my teachers, my elders, my colleagues, sisters, brothers of all faith, you have taught me, my friends, you have taught me and nurtured me and empowered me with your presence. You've taught me how to be a healing and empowering presence in someone's life. I promise to present in service. I, have, I promise to be present in service as beautifully and unconditionally as you have been there for me, God permitting. I want to thank my family for accompanying me through all the highs and lows. I'm grateful for you. I always will be. I'm sorry, I'm going to put you on spot. So my brother, he is retired army. He is the source of my inspiration as a big brother. He smoked me. <laughs> he said he was preparing me for military. I still love you. <laughs> it is because of this gentleman's dedication and journeying him through his military career, I recognize the importance of chaplaincy and armed forces, not only for our service members, but their families as well. Because when one gets deployed, all their family members join them. So, thank you, big brother. Go Army. <laughs> Go Air Force. <laughs> it is, however, impossible to fully express the gratitude worthy of a mother's love. May God protect and preserve all our mothers, our elders, and our guardians, and make us all the coolness of their eyes in both the realms. My mother has accompanied me the most ever since my existence, quite literally. I was in her womb. <laughs> Side note, this is important as well. Motherhood is not restricted to just giving physically birth. You don't have to be a mom just to be a mother. If you're a dad, you're an uncle, your brother, your sister, you can still be a mom. Who? <laughs> My mother has nurtured and protected me in her womb, both physically and spiritually. She still does that. I would not have been standing here without her. I aspire to be as strong as she is in her faith and resilience to do the right thing. I'm only a speck of her might. She instilled two very important principles that have shaped my ministry. That God is always near and close to its creation and to never despair in the Rahmah of Allah, in the Rahmah of God. Rahmah is a dominant attribute of God, which essentially means the complete compassionate care that is ever present and freely given to all, everywhere, all times. She taught me from Quran that God says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ لَا تَقْنَتُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ The meaning, close to it. And when my servant asks you concerning me, then surely I am very near. God says that directly. He does not want anybody else to tell me, tell you, that he's close to us, individually. I am very near, do not despair of the Rahmah of God. These, these principles are not only important for me, I think, in my understanding, my little bit of experience in this field, the number one reason behind all sorts of psychological, emotional, and spiritual problems is that we feel alone. We experience loneliness. So these principles, they have guided me. And I, in the witness of God, I, I promise that I will, I promise that I will embody these guiding principles and take this journey of pastoral service in the name of God and with the support of my ancestors and my community, every single person who's here and who's in my heart, inshallah. Lastly, you have to cheer for this, okay? To all the girls and young women witnessing this moment, unveil 
and to everybody who feels inspired at this feat. I want you to know that God has a plan for you and is always with you. Go be the best version of yourself and accomplish the mission you were specifically designed to fulfill. Don't let anyone or anything stop you. And when they do, be kind, be generous, be resilient, but don't you quit. Please do not give in to self-doubt. You got this. Victory is sweeter with all the souls in your tear. And finally, give it up for yourself. This is happening because you believed in this mission and this possibility. Thank you for your support and thank you for your love. I need those envelopes because I'm going to hold myself accountable to your blessings and your trust. See you at the reception. Assalamu alaikum, peace, shalom.